you better preach it, preach it, say it, say it. Ah, welcome to Preach Kev Preach, another edition, another sermon episode. This one, we're going to tag this, the the East. We're talking about NFC East and the AFC East. You got your Patriots, your your Bills, Dolphins, Jets, Cowboys, the Giants, Redskins, and the Super Bowl champs, Eagles. Uh, We're going to get into each team. Uh, But first, I would like to shout out the Hall of Fame class of 2018 where you um, include the contributor, Bobby Beathard, linebacker, Robert Brazil, safety, Brian Dawkins, guard, Jerry Kramer, linebacker, Ray Lewis, wide receiver, Randy Moss, and Terrell Lawrence, and linebacker, Brian Erlacher. Before we get into this, I want to say this. I think this is the best class of all time. You have the best linebacker, Brian Erlacher, one of the, as far as for his era, was the second best linebacker behind Ray Lewis. And you arguably putting in the two top the three three of the top receivers and like you putting them in right there. They go in uh, Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, T.O. Heavy when to order them. That's the that's the top three. Brian Dawkins. In his era, he was probably the best safety as well. So shout out to them. Congratulations to them. Um let's get started. The New York Jets were five and eleven last year, two and four in the division. Uh, notable acquisitions, they brought in Teddy Bridgewater, um, re-signed Josh McCown, signed Isaiah Crowell, and drafted Sam Darnold. What are your thoughts on the Jets? Um, I feel like the Jets are just going to have a building year, man. Like, uh, I don't think Sam Darnold's going to play that much. They already said that he has, a, he has a chance to win the job, but it's probably going to take a year for him to get that starting job over McCown. And I I, he might start later in the season, but I just think it's going to be a learning process for that whole team. I don't see them winning very many games. Right. I said the same thing. Um, a lot of people have um, McCown you know, losing his job very early. And I'm thinking, okay, it's a hard schedule for McCown, Darnold, or Teddy. Um, you're playing the NFC North and the AFC South, which you can say are two, you know, two of the tough divisions going into this year. And then their uh, AFC West opponent is probably has is probably the toughest matchup for them, which is the Denver Broncos, because they're not going to be able to score on that defense. Right. So you you and then for Sam Darnold, if you if you start him week one, you don't bench you know your future. So you have to either you gonna let him ride it out for all sixteen games, or would you rather have, let him learn behind McCown, see how he prepared for actual NFL games, and then you know at the end, like we said, take over. Another part they. The, the defense wasn't that great last year. Uh, they ranked 19th in passing and 24th in rushing. I mean, but they did take steps. Uh, they start, they signed two starting cornerbacks in uh, Mo Claiborne and Tremaine Johnson from the Rams. And they also added a, a starting linebacker uh, in Avery, Avery Williamson. So at least they made the right steps. Um, with Todd Bowles, a head coach, you expect the defense to be, you know, top tier like, like he was when he was in Arizona. So what if if you had to guess if McCown does lose a job to Sam Darnold, what game around do you see that happening? I feel like their schedule gets a lot easier after they face y'all, uh, y'all in Minnesota. Oh well, it's at Jets, but I feel like their easy their schedule gets easier after Minnesota, and I feel like that would be a perfect time just for him to come in and get some games. He gets two games against New England, which he's going to need those games throughout his whole career if he stays as a Jet. And he's avoiding defenses like the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Denver Broncos. That's actually a good point. Play, I probably would put him in either the, the at Miami game versus or Buffalo right, right before the bye week, and that way, like I said, that way that gave him an extra week to prepare for New England. You know, you play Tennessee, which is a de- pretty decent defense in Houston, but you know, you get Green Bay later on the season, which, like I said, if you want to be able to, if you, if you want to be the star, you have to be able to go against Tom Brady, go against Aaron Rodgers, and show that you know you can hang with those kind of caliber quarterbacks um i have the jets going five and eleven uh same record as last year they really they really impressed me last year cause i thought it was they was going to be the, they was going to be the team to go over 16 and they showed that you know just mccall playing solid football i mean he he was the reason why they was five and eleven yeah i have the jets at two and 14 i just i probably should have them win more games against miami but 
I just don't see it in the team this year, man. Like, honestly, it doesn't matter who's at QB for me because this is going to be a run-first offense, and Crowell is just going to have the ball. All right, well, let's move over to Miami Dolphins, who was 6-10 of last year, 2-4 and four in the division, lost Tannehill in training camp to an ACL tour tear, so they had to call on Jay Cutler, and that didn't prove to be any better. Uh, <laughs> it, should, it, might, it might as well <laughs> – you might as well have went with Matt Moore. Uh, the pass offense was 18. The rush offense was almost dead last. Adam Gase. I like Adam Gase a lot as far as a coach. And I think he's going. He's changing the culture of Miami. You see he got rid of um, Dominican Sue. He got rid of a guy like Jarvis Landry. I think he, I think he wants guys who, who like, listen to him. I don't know. Cause buy I into like, his system. Yeah, buy, yeah, buy into his system because, hey, you know, Sue's not going to. And Jarvis Landry, I mean, I guess – they didn't want to pay him. They didn't see him as that valuable as much as he wanted to get paid, which I can understand. He's a slot, slot receiver. He can do a lot of things, but who knows? One of my questions I want to ask, though, do you, even though he lost to this year last year, do you think this is Tannen Hill's last chance? I do think this is Tannen Hill's last chance because last year was supposed to be his breakout year, and he really hasn't had like his breakout season. Go back to two years ago. That was the year he was – the Dolphins went on, what was it, like a six or seven game win streak where Tannehill right. was just bringing them back in the in the second half of games. Like, if he can do that for a whole season, then he needs to do it because this Dolphin team definitely needs it. Adam Gates did a lot of things for this offense because you see how they really struggled last year. Even, they was in 19th in the uh, red zone, dead last in third down percentage. So, a score offense, 20th in the NFL. So he went out and drafted uh, Mike Gusek, tight end for Penn State. And, you know, for all Adam Gates systems, he features the tight end. Also, he went out and got uh, Evan Dola from the Patriots and brought in Wilson from the Kansas City Chiefs to pair alongside with DeMonte Parker and Kenny Steels. Went out signed Frank Gore, bring him back home. So this offense, you got to hope that is is better than last year. I mean, that's the only thing you can hope for. Who knows what kind of steps they're going to take. As far as anything else from Miami, uh, they – that's pretty much it. You get improve, improve the offense, make that make that a little better than what it was. Your, your defense is the middle of the pack, so you don't have too much to go. And I think they got one of the steals in the draft and uh, getting Mika Fitzpatrick from Alabama. Pro fo- going into the season, Pro Football Focus has their run the ranked at thirty uh, second. Do you think they're going to be able to win games if they can't control the time of possession? Well, yeah, if you can't control the time of possession, no, I don't see. I don't see. Um, a lot of teams have success when you don't win the time of possession. And Dolphins ranked 22nd last year, and that's with a, a top half rushing defense. Losing Sue will make them take a step back. And Cameron Wake is 35. They really don't have too much too much going for them, except you know if the Dolphins owner want to give Gase some, some more time because this roster is not good on paper. I, I have them going four and twelve this season. Uh, I, I just think they're they have a brutal opening stretch uh, schedule, and they have a bad ending schedule as well. So if they don't get it, if they don't get it going in the beginning, um, I see I can see them falling off late at the end. Um, I'm basically the same way. I have them at five at eleven. I should probably have them losing to the Jets at least one game, but no. So we ba- we basically have the same thing. Dolphins have a lot to work on. Let's move on to the Buffalo Bills. This is a team that. Going into the last season, nobody predicted them to be in the playoffs. Um, they find a way to squeak in there with a nine and seven record, three and three in the division. Um, so you guarantee, you know, two losses to New England. Now, their biggest problem going into this in this into this season is who is the guy at quarterback? Because to me, even though Nathan Peterman did that that game he had last year against five picks and against the Chargers, you really can't count him out because he's he's going against a rookie that nobody. I, a lot of people don't, don't really like him. They say, you know, he's inaccurate, all this stuff like that. And he can throw the long ball, but he can't throw the short game. So that's his problem. And A.J. McCarron, I mean, he never started again. I mean, he never had – he couldn't take any Dalton spot. You know, so even though Dalton was a guy, he couldn't even put no pressure on Dalton to, you know, take his spot. So I don't think – I don't think they, – they don't have no, no idea who will be the starter. I think Josh, you might as well go with Josh Allen if My, that's the case. Yeah, you honestly just might as well. Um, they trade with Corey Coleman. And they get they got him for a 2020 seventh round pick. So that's a seventh round pick, and not even not even next year, the following year. So this is a very very low risk, high reward type of trade that you look for. Um, they got a new offense coordinator, the ball. I think coming over from New England. I mean, I, I like the, I like the Bills, and but see, I don't think 
I think last year was a fluke. It's one of those fluky years. Now, they have a great secondary. I like uh, Jadavius White. Um, they, I think they picked Avante Davis. And, you know, Michael High is one of the top safeties in the game. And they added the linebacker from Virginia Tech, Tremaine Evans, who, I don't know if you know, he's like 20 years old. He's like 6'4". Like 6'4 linebacker. He, and somebody say he looked like a Kevin Benjamin, but in shape. Um, yeah, I uh, I was watching NFL Network yesterday, and they said uh, they really like it, Edmonds, because he's already like he's already the leader, or he's trying to be the leader of the defense, and he's in uh, he's eating lunch, and he has flashcards, just going through the plays. Yeah, and, and, he, and he calls the plays out for that. That's that's gonna be his job this year. Um, you talk about defense, a defense last year who was fifteenth you know, in passing, twenty ninth in uh, rushing. You know, they added a starting tackle, start, added a starting defensive end. And like you said, they got Tremaine Evans. They they're making the right steps to still be a, a, a very valuable defense. And the offense, like you said, on paper, besides the quarterback, looks great as far as the weapons that you have. But I still don't think that eagles out to wins for them. See, it's the same thing. Their offense looks good on paper, but every single position is a question mark for me. Cause I don't know how well they're gonna perform, especially with that with that huge question mark at quarterback. Um, so I honestly have them at like three and thirteen this year. I don't see them winning many games. Their defense will keep them in the games, but I don't think they're gonna have the prowess on offense to move the ball the way to win some games. Right, and I think I'm I'm four and twelve, and I think any team that has a good quarterback they will lose against, and any team that they're de- they're playing against and their defense is better than their defense, they're also gonna lose against. And like I said, playing the AFC South, we have Andrew Luck, Deshaun Watson. Even Marcus Mariota, you're already losing those, and Jacksonville has a better defense than you. So <laughs> I, I can see a whole getting swept by the whole division. It's it's gonna it's gonna be hard to to muster out wins, and I got them four and twelve as well. Do you think Shady's gonna play this year? Until until they prove that he did something, I don't see why the NFL will step in and suspend him. Um, because you can't just go on false accusations and make guys miss miss their ske- their season because it's only a sixteen game schedule. So if you miss four games. That, that's a quarter of the season. So yeah. I hope he does play because uh, the Bills would need it. And if he doesn't, I mean, that just that just make, make the 4-12 and 12 even seem more like more real than it may actually be. So let's go into the champions. The New England Patriots. <laughs> the champions. The AFC East champions. The AFC champions. All that nine yards. 13-3 um, last year, 5-1 in the division. The defense – Tell me about the defense, why it gave up so many yards last season. Man, I cannot tell you how why we gave up so many yards last season. Um, we person it might have been because we honestly we couldn't we could move the ball and we could score points, but it, we were 29th in total yards, but we were fifth in points. And then <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's that's why that's why I said that. Cause like that that's just a crazy stat to me. We were 13 in uh time of possession, which is about the same as like the rest of our division minus the bills last year. So we can, we just, I don't know why we just couldn't hold the ball, but when we got the ball and we could move it, we scored. And yeah, I know, I, I know the Patriots have done some things to improve it. Um, they took two linebackers on day two in the draft. They're getting Dante Hightower back. Uh, they traded for Danny Shelton, which I think could be a main reason, you know, good because Danny Shelton is really, really good in run, run defense. Um, it can help put pressure on the quarterback as well. And then you drafted uh, Duke Dawson out of Florida from, uh, as a cornerback, and put you put him in the slot, you know, with Gilmore and uh, I think McCourty. The, yeah, we have both McCourties now. Yeah, both, yeah, both McCourties. The, the corner that McCourty, I think that's what – what's his name? Not, not Jason. Devin. Okay, Devin McCourty on the outside. So now you have a, you have a decent secondary. I mean, the secondary was pretty good last year, now you have, but now you finally have a slot corner if Duke Dawson can, can live up to the hype. Of what he is, I guess really the defense is gonna be fine because Bill Bill has his imprint on that. The offense still got Tom Brady, but what do you think about the supporting cast? I mean, we know we know Gronk is the best offensive weapon in the game probably. Um, the running backs they draft one first round, Tony Michelle out of Georgia, um, Burkhead, James White still. You still got Jeremy Hill, and you even still got um, Gillespie. Gillespie. And receivers, you, you release two receivers, no element for the first four weeks, and Chris Hogan is really your only valuable receiver. What would you say about this this uh, this supporting cast along with Tom Brady outside of Grunt? 
I feel like we're just going to try to be a more conservative offense. Like we're going to go back to when our offensive line wasn't the greatest, like two years ago, where we just have those quick duck off passes to our running backs. And that's just going to hide some of the stuff we, we can't do in the long ball, or we're just going to pass it to Gronk and he's, he's going to Gronk smash his way to the end zone. <laughs> All right. Do you think this, do you think this, this, this Bill Belichick versus Brady like saga like will continue, or you think, or you think it, it kind of gets some ground and be covered up? I feel they're just both really, really competitive, and when it comes to wanting to win the game, they're going to be on the same page. But my question for you is: is the re- the reinvention on defense a way for Belichick to make sure Tom Brady doesn't fall off this season? If Bill can, because not now Bill off Patricia, so he has to put more, you know, more hands on defense. If he can get the defense to playing top, you know, top fifteen at least, Pages Pages are gonna be fine, of course. Um, it's not it's not hard to win this division in the AFC easy, especially you know with Bills, Jets, and Dolphins taking back back steps. So I mean, all he has to do is be able to ha- handle his own against Jacksonville. Kansas City, and when they play Pittsburgh in in, in the season, if you can have, if you can get two out of those three games right there, then you can see Patriots. Okay, it's still elite, the elite of the elites. But as far as roster wise, I mean, you really don't look good that good on paper. But when you have the best coach in football and probably the best quarterback of all time, that sews up a lot of issues that you have. Uh, I I have Patriots going twelve and four this season. Um, I think I had them. I had them losing at Jacksonville, dropping one to Buffalo. Dropping one to Miami because Tom Brady for some reason can't do nothing when he's down in Miami. And so maybe, only when it's hot maybe, outside, it's not going to be hot outside. <laughs> that now that's true. And and at Pittsburgh, um, I can say it's, it might be better than twelve and four, thirteen and three last year. But I mean, who who knows? You playing your toughest games on the road. Yeah, I have them at uh, thirteen and three. I have them losing at Detroit, uh, at Tennessee, and at Pittsburgh. I really like Tennessee this year. I just think like they made their improvements on their secondary and they're just going to have that defense to compete with anybody. Um, the Detroit game is right after it's week three, right after the Jacksonville game. And I just think we're not going to be ready. <laughs> we, we prepared too much for Jacksonville and Pittsburgh. We always lose at Pittsburgh during the season and then whip their ass in the playoffs. Yeah, that's pretty much covered. Uh, and then that's the AFC East. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and come back for the, NFC. All right, we're back with the NFC East, a division where the Super Bowl champs came out. Giants had a bad season. Redskins, the Cowboys, middle of the pack. So let's start with the uh, New York Giants. They were three and thirteen. Uh, lost OBJ early in the season. So my question to you is: Are Gi- should Giants pay OBJ? Absolutely. He is one of the best receivers in football. If he, you'd rather have him on your team than him go somewhere else and him absolutely dust your team for 125 yards. Right. And I, I don't get why they take it so long to do this. OBJ is on pace, was on pace before injury, was on pace to like shatter so many records. Um, and it's, people don't realize that OBJ, his age now, is far better than what Julio and Antonio Brown were at his age. Uh, if I'm, if there was no OBJ, Eli Manning would have fallen off a long, long time ago. And that's the and that's another point. That's exactly the reason why they chose Saquon over getting a quarterback in this draft. You, if you if you put weapons around him, he looks better as a quarterback. Do you think that's? Do you think that was a short term fix or? Well, I, I know I know Barkley is going to be like the man, but. Do you think that's a short-term fix, or is that going to hurt them more in the long run if they didn't get one of these quarterbacks this year? I mean, it can be either or. It depends on how the, – the, I think Davis Webb behind Eli Manning is a decent quarterback. Um, if you keep if you keep him in that system forever, how many years Eli plays, I mean, he can step right in. Or you got you got guys who may be free agents next year, like Tyrod Taylor or Joe Flacco. <laughs> I could sign one of them, you know. So the, Brown, the Browns are already talking about signing Tyrod to an extension. So, but if you Tyrod, why would you do that? You know. But anyway, you got you got Stephen Shepard back healthy. Brandon Marshall is gone now. You got Evan Ingram emerged as a good tight end. Pat Shermer come over as the new head coach. And what he did with Minnesota last year, 
you can only expect to see Giants taking that next step in offense as well. Um, you're talking about an offense who was ranked like what? Well, like I said, it, it was really injuries that, that made this this offense this bad, offensive line. 26 in the red zone, 30, 30th in the NFL on third down percentage. And, you know, Minnesota was uh, was number one. So you can hope that you can have that kind of a jump with Eli Manning and OBJ and having Saquon Barkley back there. Um, and you got past the offense of 19th, and this was without, without your main your main player. So the offense really shouldn't fall, should, should come back to earth. Um, the defense, I think, fell off because of the offense. Um, yeah, I feel the same way. So this is just talk about a team that could easily, with I think the year before that it was eleven and five and it fell to three and thirteen. So it's a team that can easily, with a fourth place schedule, can get back into the playoff consideration. Yeah, I have them going uh, nine and seven this year. They play the NFC South and the AFC South, which is a whole bunch of tougher games in both divisions. So I just I only see them nine and seven. I don't see them beating Jacksonville. Uh, I have them beating New Orleans, but that's because it's not in New Orleans. I just oh, it's a hard schedule. I got them going eight and eight. Uh, it's a hard schedule for any team in this division to you know separate themselves so much, uh, especially especially. When we, but ahead of the four place schedule, when you get to see Tampa Bay, um, uh, and even I guess San Francisco to a lighter lighter um discussion. But eight and eight, it seems seems not too bad. I mean, I could see them going ten and six, maybe, or even six and ten, depending on how games play out. But eight and eight is a good spot for them. It is. It's a very good improvement from last year. It's just Eli Manning could fall off even harder. We do not know. Let's move on to Washington Redskins. I guess my only thing about Redskins is Kirk Cousins versus Alex Smith. Um, they didn't. They didn't want to pay Kirk Cousins, but then they traded for Alex Smith and then gave him a long term extension. It tells me that they didn't really want Kirk Cousins. Uh, if, if it wasn't for Mike Shanahan, they would never draft Kirk Cousins in the first place because Mike Shanahan re- really didn't want Robert Griffin. So Mike Shanahan saved this Redskins, Redskins franchise from years to come, and the Robert Griffin was injured and couldn't play anymore. What, what, what's whose side are you on in this Kirk Cousins versus Redskins thing? Like, do you think they made the right decision and taking Alex Smith, or you think they should? They probably been better off with Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is the better quarterback, but I feel like Alex System is going to fit into this new system they have better. Oh, right, that makes sense. Cause yeah, cause Jay, to me, Jay Gruden, like I said, is a he's he's a risk taker, and you don't want a quarterback who you know might he might not turn the ball a, a ton, but you don't want a, you want a quarterback who can who can limit the mistakes, I guess. Of the you know, if if I want to call this kind of play as a quarterback, if you can be able to handle it like Alex Smith can. You know, this this guy doesn't throw picks; he throws. He might throw a pick every three games. He's really, he's really very, very smart with the ball, very high IQ, and with sub breakdown, you know, he can take off a run, which is um, his very, very underrated part of his game. With that being said, do you see Washington coming out winning games? Uh, yeah, I have them at nine and seven. I just feel like they've improved their offensive line. They went out and got Darius Geese. They have Chris Thompson for third downs, and all the weapons around Alex Smith are his type of weapons, except maybe. Josh Doxson, who is their big receiver, but they have Jameson Crowder, Paul Richardson, who is a reception guy, but they were pretty slow in offense last season. So I don't know if they're going to be able to throw the ball around. And I don't think he's going to be as productive as Kirk Cousins. Yeah, even Kirk Cousins having a bad offensive line and defense not playing up to par, Kirk Cousins was still able to have like maybe like a you know, 500 record. Um, this is out his star weapons like Jordan Reed, um, but this team, this team, like you said, plays per game twenty six in the NFL time possession only twenty in the NFL, and they couldn't run the ball like you said, but they added they added a running back and hopefully the offensive line can stay healthy. Um, the defense, rushing wise, was horrible. Uh, they couldn't throw nobody on the ground, so it's like it's, it maybe so if they get down in games, it's probably over because Alex Smith is not the guy to bring you back. Yeah, something interesting about their schedule is I have them starting off nine and two and then losing their last five games. Both games versus Philadelphia, one game with the Giants, one and then at Jacksonville and at Tennessee. That is a terrible way to end the season. Actually, after that Tampa Bay game, I don't think they'll be favored in the game. Like even like at Dallas, you know, that's Mm-mm. that's another game that they're not gonna be favored in, even if they do win or not. At Philadelphia won't be favored. Maybe at home against Giants they'd be favored, but the last three games after that they won't be. Mm-hmm. 
And like I said, it's a hard schedule uh, for anybody in this in this division. Um, I had the Redskins actually seven and nine. Um, I think because Alex Smith can win, he's a winner. That they're not going to you know fall flat. They was uh, seven and nine last year. Get rid of Kirk Cousins at Alex Smith. I think they might be the same the same record. Let's move on to the Cowboys, <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. They say Jason Garrett, the head coach, still have the same coordinators. They lose Des Bryant. They lose Jason Witten. Offense. I think, you know, I think it's crazy. You know how sometimes in life where, where one thing is bad and another thing is good, and then you're like, okay, if I get that one thing that's bad to be good, then I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. But, but I think in this, in this case, they flipped. I think the offense was so great and the defense was horrible, you know, two or three years ago. I think as the defense got better, the offense kind of drooped down. And I th- and I actually think the defense is going to be the reason why they actually win games this year. The the, off- the offense, you know, can run the ball and all this stuff like that. But I think the defense is going to be the reason why the offense is going to be stay in the game. They don't have to score as many points as they needed to last year. You got from for this is the reason I said it for defense. You added an elite pass rusher in the Marcus Lawrence. Your your linebacking core is great, especially when you dra- you draft the one first round. You still got Sean Lee and you still got Jalen Smith. The corners. They're young, but they, you know they they started all last year and they come into their own. And I, I think this time it's gonna be the offense fault. Uh, I agree the same way. I just that's why I have them at three and thirteen. Uh, their defense is gonna Oof. be great, but I just I just feel like it's gonna be like that Ty Gurley situation a few years two years ago when they're just gonna load the box, load the box, load the box for Zeke because. They're not going to be able to pass the ball because I, I hate Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is without Jason Witten, like, and he like his only safety blanket is going to be Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley is going to have like ten targets a game. Like, I, I I don't trust this offense enough to move the ball and put points on the board to capitalize on this good defense. Okay, so scoring offense, they scored twenty two points a game last year, and the defense allowed. Defense allowed 20 points a game. So they still won the game last year based on right there. Um so you so you don't think that's that Dak that Dak could take a, a that, that step that he need this year? Because I mean this is the third season and you know he's still got one of the best offensive line in the game. He still got the one of the best run backs in the game. You don't think you don't think that that's that's enough to help to help Dak out? No, because I don't believe Allen Hearns is gonna be that guy and who you have Terrence Williams on the other side of the ball, but he's going to lose his spot to Michael Gallup. And I, I honestly feel like Dak Prescott peaked his first three seasons because the team around him was built so well, or the offense at least. Um, I think this this had to be the year where, when you talk about dual threat running backs, when you mention Bill Gurley, David Johnson, this is the year that you had to include Zeke if if the Cowboys want to be good. If Cowboys want to be a great, you know. Do something on offense. That uh, Zeke has to, he has to find a way to you know get fifty receptions um, and lead the team in running. Have win like have the best uh, from scrimmage yards in, in the field. Like these, these, those are the steps that they that if, if you're a Cowboys coach and owner that you want this to happen because you need Zeke. I mean, with with Zeke, they they don't they, they haven't lost games. They were saying like the thirteen and three the year before, and this year nine and seven. They don't lose when they have Zeke. Do but do you think uh, Tavon Austin is just gonna fill in that spot as the pass catching back? I think Tavon Austin is gonna be everything that people not people are not looking at. We always mention you know, Cole Beasley, we mention Hearns, Gallup, and Terrence Williams. I think Tavon Austin potentially could be the spark for this Cowboys offense. You get him the ball, you're not gonna be able to stop him. He's one of those guys with the ball in his hands. Good luck. I know if I was coaching this team, I would have him and Zeke on the field at the same time. Because that way, you don't know what I'm going to do. And I, I'm not, I don't have the Cowboys that bad. I think Cowboys can somehow get eight and eight. Um, like their Philly games, the Philly games are pretty spread out. They play Jacksonville early in the season. Um, they get they get coached late in the season. Like they get New Orleans late in the season. So I mean, they they have they do have some bad they do have some bad stretches um, after the bye week. Tennessee, Philadelphia, Atlanta. Um, but I mean, I think I just think I just think when you have guys like Dak and Zeke who prove that they're winners, like like in this college and now, that it's hard to see them drop off like that unless 
if, if that O line can stay healthy, I I can still believe in the offense. I just I just think there's going to be too much on. They're just going to load the box, load the box. Like you looking back uh, at all teams like that, like Stephen Jackson back when he was in the Rams back in the day, even Adrian Peterson with Minnesota. It's sometimes you know they're going to run the ball, and sometimes but you, you can't, can't stop, stop it. it. Yeah, and and that's what that's what I'm saying about the offensive line. The offensive line can stay healthy. Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, Travis Frederick, and the two, you know, Connor Williams from Texas, who was supposed to be a first round tackle, and they moved in the guard, Lyle Collins as well. Like if they those five can start from from game one to game sixteen, still believe in offense as far as you know, I can believe in Zeke and you know, hope hope that they can get some win mustered out. Let's move on to Super Bowl champions, the Philadelphia Eagles. It's hard to repeat as champs in the NFL. Uh, we only seen that a couple of times. The New England Patriots back early in two thousands, so that's over fifteen years ago. The Cowboys in the nineties, oh, yeah. Cowboys in the nineties, and the Broncos when they had L wave in the last two seasons. It's it's really it's a rare thing to see, and I don't think Eagles can. And this is why I say that because you lose your offensive coordinator; he's now the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, and you lost your quarterback's coach, who usually. That's how it goes. You mean office coordinator leave, your quarterback's coach move to office coordinator. But he also leaves and go to Minnesota. So it's like now Doug Peterson is the lone guy in that locker room. I don't know. He had to bring anybody else in to be office coordinator. Uh, so he's, he's going to be the guy calling the plays. And he don't he don't have that kind of guys in his ear anymore. With um, I, I think it's hard when you don't have office coordinator to come in that's not the head coach. And he's bringing a guy who, who was the MVP last year until he got hurt. But it's gonna be that pressure on him to win the Super Bowl. And you think he's gonna crack under that pressure? See that, and that's and that's the question we don't know because we haven't seen Wes too much. He only, that was what second season last year. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we haven't seen how much he's done. He he did, he was pretty good his first season and second season last year. He was amazing, and I I think he will regress as far as touchdown passes that he threw last season. Um, uh, I agree. But I mean, like I said, and with this schedule. It's, it's going to be very, very hard for him to repeat because not only do you play the AFC South, who had three playoff teams last year, you're also playing the Rams and Minnesota. You're playing everybody in the playoffs from last year with with the division that you're in because even though they're better than everybody in their division, it's still division games and teams know how to play them. So that And you're playing the AFC South as well. And it's very, very hard. I think I got their record at 11-5. And I think by the time the playoffs come, they they're gonna be burnt out because you're playing you're playing quality games each each game. I think that there's only one game where they can just show up to the field and win. That's versus Tampa Bay in week two. After that, you're playing hard games every week. No, I don't see them repeating as champions this year, but I I still have them at thirteen and three. I don't I I challenge you to find me a more complete total team in football. When they play Jacksonville at Jacksonville. <laughs> that, that offense is not gonna do anything against that defense. The offense, the offense, the offense line is good, but you don't have no stars outside of the quarterback. Yeah, but the Eagles defense is good enough to also stop the the Jacksonville Jaguars because they have one offensive player. Playing Min- Min- Minnesota is a complete team. Rams is a complete team with Aaron Donald there. I I think I think playing at Jacksonville at New Orleans will kind of and at and at LA is kind of. It's kind of bad, you know, bad for them. I mean, I think Eagles can Eagles can really win all all the games they can. They I, they, they could go sixteen to zero, but as far as like you know, because they're like you said, the complete roster they have they have probably the best complete roster in the game, especially with wins at quarterback. Um, it's it's just that I don't see enough playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. You got you got guys like Nelson Aguilar. He's not gonna surprise people this year like he did last year. Alshon Jeffrey played all sixteen games. When when did that ever happen before? Um. Jay Ajayi is still with a banged up knee that everybody's worried about, and they lost Legarry Blunt um, as far as insurance. Now, if Wentz can come back and be the guy he was last year, then everything I'm saying don't mean anything because he can make anybody better. Um, and if Wentz can come back at the Tory CL and do that, then you know what I'm saying then that's then that's a different different uh, different case. Uh, I also see the Texans as a complete team as well on both sides of the ball. Especially with a, a healthy J.J. White and a healthy Clowney, good luck for teams for playing them. Oh, yeah, on defense, uh, yeah. 
I just so I, mean, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about Deshaun Watson. Yeah, we we saw a small sample last year. Oh yeah, very small sample. But if you're just projecting, you got you got to you just got to think that they got a complete team as well. Uh, I just I just think this is a hard it is a hard schedule this year for them, and I think I just think being burnt out before the playoffs won't go again. Like like will hold them back this time. And then like you got guys who won't be as hungry. Like Wentz gonna be hungry. Mm-hmm. Then you got like you got guy like Dan Sproles and his last run. And Jason Peters, but he's a tackle, you know. So, so it's not like it's not, it's not like a lot of guys missed missed the playoffs last year, as far as key contributors. So, I mean, I, I like I like Philadelphia Eagles. I think they're they're still going to win the division. Like, like I said, I got them going eleven and five, three games above second place. Uh, you have them at thirteen and three. So, I mean, we still we still think they're going to win the division. I do like the addition of Mike Wallace, Michael Bennett, Holy Nada. They got guys who. Probably gonna be hungry too. So yeah, I'm excited to see Mike Wallace on this team get into that Tory Smith role from last year. I feel like he's gonna he's gonna do pretty good. A better version of Tory Smith. Yeah, now 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 he's on the the Panthers. Yeah, he's on the Panthers. All right, well that, that's it for us, us today. That's the NFC East. Um, we have New England winning and Eagles winning, just like they did last season. Cowboys so, gonna be trash. I don't think Calvin's going to be that trash, but he thinks so. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us today. Preach can't preach.